It is now. Amen. Okay, so let's add him in. Sir? Uh, I think so. Yeah, a couple of them. Yeah, it would take some requests. Okay. Yes, sir. Keep your <laughs> well, that that's not hard. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's take our hymn books and let's please turn to song number twenty-seven to begin with. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. All right. And, of course, that was... Bill Gaither, one of his favorite songs that he wrote. And let's turn over now to page number 242. Let's see, wait a minute. 246. 246. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gained every day, still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by heaven's aid. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay Where doubt suffice and fears dismay Though some may dwell where these abound My prayer, my aim is higher ground Lord, lift me up and let me stand By faith on heaven's stable land A higher plane than I have found Lord, plant my feet on higher ground On the third I want to live above the world, though Satan's darts at me are hurled. My faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a glimpse of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. All right, God's people said, amen. amen. That's a wonderful, wonderful song. Be thinking about a favorite. First of all, we're going to go ahead and open the uh, service in prayer. And why don't we do things just a little. We'll get one of the cabooses ahead a little bit in the train. But do we have uh, any more people that have an illness we'd like to add that are not on the list? Sore? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. Are you over, uh, you're not over 60, are you? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, they they start showing up. Okay. All right, left eye floater. Let's see. Could will could you get uh, this family a couple of uh, prayer lists, prayer sheets? Pastor has a horrible rash from the apparently from the crop dusters. He caught it. Yeah. Head to toe. <laughs> the uh, the rash, not the spray. <laughs> okay, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Brother, give me your first name. I apologize. Norm, that's right. I'm sorry. Amen. And your specific uh, prayer request again is? Kidney. kidney, that's right. Have you had surgery on your kidney? Yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody else you'd like to add? Chuck. And we're glad to see Chuck back. If you're glad to see Chuck, let him know of the hearty amen. 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 All right. The woods got to be too much for you in Colorado, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a little warmer than, yeah. And your request, sir? Okay. All right, we're going to put uh, your name, Chuck, and then issues with the heat. Yeah, in the in the summer, <laughs> in the summer, we used to own a home north of Durango, up on the mountain, eighty eight hundred feet. Snowed at our house, rained in Durango, so we know. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Okay, and let's see. Yes, on prayer request, please, please put. America. Our country needs prayer. It really does. I don't know if any of you are able to watch the uh, questioning for uh, Lewandowski on the so-called impeachment committee uh, that they're trying to find more reasons to impeach the president. But two things I learned, I saw Lewandowski as sharp as a tack. And number two, they definitely have a vengeance. But let's just pray for America because we don't need to become a socialist nation. We don't need that. Okay, anybody else? Okay, let's uh, open the service in prayer. Then we will take a, a, a song, special song request. Yes, sir. Okay, you hold that and pop your hand up. We're going to pray right now first. Amen? Okay. Our precious Heavenly Father, as we open the service in prayer this evening, we are so thankful for your love for us. We're thankful that you meet our need and you care for us. And Lord, if we could write a book like was said in the Gospel of John, that it would fill the earth. And Lord, we have so much to thank you for. We love you and we praise you. And we ask, Lord, that you'd receive the glory and the honor. And we ask that you'd answer prayers that have been listed here this evening and then also on the prayer sheet we do ask for uh, Pastor Storm that you would that you would heal him of this um, rash. We ask for Dana with the issue with his left eye that you'd help him with that, and give 
the doctor's wisdom, but Lord, even better, that you touch him and remove the floaters and heal him. We ask for Norm with his kidney issues, that you would touch him and give him healing and strength. We ask for Chuck that has uh, issues uh, with the heat. And Lord, we knew that before he left. It was not really hot, but it's hot now. And we ask that you'd help him. And we ask for our nation, that you'd bless our nation. And that, Father, you would help America protect it and preserve it until the rapture. And we ask that, Father, you would send a revival. And then, Lord, we do ask you for your will to be done on the election in 2020, I believe, of November. And we ask that you'd help to get the nation straightened out in that election. And Lord, we ask that you be glorified with that. We do ask also in addition for Israel, the nation that you'd protect it and bring peace to Jerusalem. We ask for your will to be done for Prime Minister Netanyahu and that you would save him. And Father, we ask for all these people on the list that have illnesses. Chuck Thomas, um, his dad has diabetes. Uh, Chuck for his uh, knee and wrist, Ryan and Carl and Jasmine and Bre uh, have cancer, Brenda who is blind, uh, Cynthia Allen uh, has neuropathy, uh, Scarlett Thibodeau for health problems. We pray for Nick's wife uh, as they're out in the uh, Gaylord, Michigan area that you would help her and give her healing and relief in her back pain and her issue she has. We pray for David Moore, who's in a coma. We ask for your will for him. Harlan with liver problems. Shane Eldridge with uh, an illness, GBS. Uh, we understand he's making progress, and we thank you for that. We ask for Delane for brain damage. Christina, high blood pressure and migraines. Uh, Laura Allen, uh, ABS. Eliezer, for, uh, who's in a coma. We ask for Madison, a 14-year-old with heart problems. And Lord, please embrace and bless uh, her and heal her. I ask for my wife, who uh, had heart surgery in 2017. And Lord, now it seems like she's losing her strength. It's getting harder to breathe. And I ask, Lord, that you'd heal her and give her, give her healing and bless the cardiologist and give them wisdom as they seek to find what the issue is. We ask uh, for Faith Promise Missions, the food bank, the finance of the church, uh, government leaders uh, to make godly decisions. And Father, we need more godly uh, government leaders to make godly decisions. And we ask for William and the O'Briens for guidance, Victor and Kathy and Jim Montoya, for guidance, Deborah Garcia, Kay Kaylee Garcia, uh, Ricky, uh, Ricky Serna, and then uh, Christian Gooden, and Jay Garza, and Roe, and Richard, and Fred Laura, and Dolly, and Sher for all of these for guidance, and Sherry Preacher for his, her pregnancy, uh, Nancy Holcomb for pregnancy, Kathy, and Ariana the same, and then Father... We pray for the students at, um, at uh, Florence Baptist Academy that you would bless each and every one of them and the teachers. And Lloyd, anoint and bless the teachers. And we ask for um, our need to get our vehicle repaired in the shop, uh, the uh, Grand Cherokee. We ask that you'd help us with that and give, give them wisdom over at the tire factory. We ask, uh, Lord, we just give you praise. For your answer to prayer, the faithfulness of, of the people, uh, lives that you've changed, Father, uh, your marvelous healing, and then ones that have been saved recently, and then for Dana, whose heart is uh, gradually getting better, we, uh, we ask for our missionaries, the Dean family of Mongolia, the Novato family, military in Japan, Gary and Nancy Storm, global Camp Ministries, Tim Erling for Juarez, Mexico, John 
McDaniels, the Navajo Indians, Jim and Myra Wright for uh, the Mission Relief Program, the Sanders family. Lord, how they need your touch in this rebellious and infidel nation of China. We ask that you'll use them and that their witness would count and that you protect them and help them to not have to be incarcerated for their faith. We ask for the Radcliffs in Mexico that you would bless them. Then for salvation, Father, for the food bank workers, all the people that come to Florence Baptist, our unsaved relatives throughout the church, uh, Robert, Ray Thomas, Jasmine, Sally and family, Renee and family, Frank, Hadley, Deborah Dalton, John Johnson, Ricky uh, Cerna, uh, Josh Myers, Joshua, Mark and Stephanie, Richard and Fred Laura. And we ask also, Father, for all of our military, that you put a hedge about them and that you would protect each and every one of them and bless our nation <coughs> and bless the sovereignty of America. And we ask that you would truly uh, help our country and our military and help our nation to remain free. And we ask, Father, that you'll bless the service uh, that will be taking place. And we ask these things in Jesus' name and God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, Chuck, what page do you have? 56. All right, we'll sing on the fa uh, their, uh, request, we'll sing first and the last. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true, it shame and reproach gladly bear. Then you'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. All right, let's at this time, let's go ahead and receive uh, the midweek offering. And, uh, Tuck, are you going to be participating in that? Are you having a hard time walking, aren't you? Okay. And, Norm, why don't you come up? That way you can go in two different directions. Okay, right after the offering, uh, here's what we'll do. We'll go straight in to the uh, study and the message. So let's look to the Lord. And, uh, and Brother Tuck, would you ask God's blessing, please? Dear Father in heaven, Lord, thank you so much for being with tonight. It's a cool, calm place to gather your name. Amen. And Lord Jesus, in your precious name, according to all that you've done for us, we ask your blessing on this offering. We give you praise.
praise and thanks for being our Savior. Thank you, Lord, for losing your life so we can have a life eternal with you. Amen. Amen. I'm going over here. Okay, what is happening this Saturday? Trap and ski. What time? Okay. Pardon? Yes. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Well, I don't have a bullet with me, but that's okay. We're going straight in the message. And for those of you that are on the internet television right now, uh, we would love to be able to take and tell you all about the upcoming events. And the best way that I know for you to do that is to come to the church service next Sunday at 10 a.m. in the morning. And we'd like to extend to you an invitation. As we are in Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading with verse 16. It's good to see everybody here this evening. Luke chapter 4. And we'll read down from verse uh, 16 down to verse 22. Beginning in verse 16, speaking of Jesus, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. <clears throat> and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue, were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bare him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? Father, we do ask now that you would bless the reading of your word. And Lord, please give me liberty and may I hide behind the cross and may only the Lord Jesus be seen this evening. And we'll be careful to thank you and to give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 16 is our text. And it came to pass, or excuse me, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Now, this evening, we're going to be speaking on a very relevant subject. And that subject entitled is how to be a witness in your hometown. Very, very imperative that, uh, 
that that would take place in all of our lives. Now, it is truly, as we all know, it's exciting to be saved. It really is. And it's exciting to be part of a church that the Lord has his hand on. Obviously, this church without God's hand would not have existed over 20 years. And the way that it was started is absolutely nothing short of miraculous. As the church grows and begins to take on the personality of all of those that become part of the church coming into it, there are certain traditions and also habits that also come uh, into the church. Hopefully, most of those habits are good and beneficial for the church family as a whole. Some of our habits are traditional, and they're old-fashioned, and they're handed down from one generation uh, to the next. Some of our habits actually are born out of necessity. There are some things that we must always do in every generation. And one of those things is being a witness for Jesus Christ. So if we ask ourselves this question this evening, and we'll do our best to answer it, how can I be a witness in my hometown? And so as we begin to look, we can discover the basic elements of the individual Christian's witnessing. Now, there are seven areas that we can be a witness to others. Number one, and here it is, you must go to church. Man, can you imagine uh, going, uh, going out witnessing and you don't have a church? You're not going to church. Well, where do you go to church? Well, last time I've been, I'm a member, but I haven't been there in weeks and months. Well, that's not going to get you very far to witness to somebody. So you must go to church. Notice verse 16, what it says. He went into the synagogue. Now, the result is fourfold. First of all, it is not very difficult to win people to Jesus Christ if we ourselves are doing what is right. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 5, the Apostle Paul says the following, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Secondly, you will receive encouragement in the church if you're part of a local church. Hebrews 10.24, again, Paul says this, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Thirdly, by going to church, we are taught, and it builds us up in the faith and in our Christian foundation and walk, you are taught instruction and doctrine in our local church. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15 says the following, But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living uh, God, the pillar and ground of the truth. So on this going to church, the fourfold result, here's the fourth. The church is so important to Jesus that it should also be to you and I also. Going to church, and I'm going to say this, I'm not jumping down anybody's throats, but I want to say this, going to church is the, for the Christian is not an option we should be in church, amen, unless we're providentially hindered. We had um, uh, in uh, churches that we've started or churches that we've been at that we've revitalized that were way down at the bottom floor. Uh, when we start recruiting workers, one thing I've always had a philosophy on is you delegate responsibility, you train and you raise up and you develop workers. We always gave a worker's uh, sheet out for them. And one of the things it says, to be, you must be, or to be faithful in all the public services of the church unless providentially hindered. And there's about five things. One of them was to pray 
for the pastor daily to hold him up before the Lord. You know, you have no idea how much Pastor Storm needs your prayers. He does. He needs the people of the church, you and I, to hold him up before the throne of grace and that the Lord would strengthen him and bless him and protect him. Now, with that in mind, on that sheet of the workers' uh, requirements is what it was. Uh, can you imagine have somebody teach Sunday school and they were in church, ah, once in a while they came, they didn't go very often. Well, what does that teach the kids that are in that class? Doesn't teach very much, does it? So at the bottom, they sign it and they date it and they give it back. The church copies it and makes a copy for them and the other is put on file for their folder that we would create for that ministry that they have. You see, we're developing uh, people that are in leadership in the church. Now, notice that what, uh, what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, the church is so important to Jesus, like we mentioned, it should be to us. And he said in Matthew 16, 18, and I say uh, also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the hell shall not prevail against it. I was in a revival meeting, holding a revival, and sometime you get a chance, bring it up on the internet. It's called Jones Run Church. It's in West Virginia. It's in a place they call a holler, you know, right back in the middle of the mountains in the coal area of West Virginia. My mom and dad were born and raised there. I miss being born in West Virginia by two weeks. In World War II, dad went over to the Philippines and mom went up to live with grandma and granddad up in Detroit. He was a guard at General Motors. And so I miss being born in West Virginia. I always liked being with the people in West Virginia to, if I could preach, fill a pulpit, or maybe hold a revival. Well, we're in the Joan Runs Church. We had something happen I've never had happen before. We had the chief of police. I'm serious, the mayor, the fire chief, and about half the police force got saved and came to church. We baptized them. We baptized people up and down in the streets and knocking on doors. And, and at the end of the week, we baptized over 50 people that had received Christ as Savior. Now, that was a meeting from Sunday to Friday night. So it was a lengthy meeting, uh, not just one day short of what we're going to be having here. But in this revival at the Jones Run Church, there was a man that came faithful every night to the revival. And he would say, we had a little short prayer time. And, and he would say, pray for my neighbor, pray for my neighbor. And one night I said, are you, are you witnessing him? He said, yes, I am. Pray he'll get saved. Well, the last night of the meeting, when the service started, in the, in the back side door, I'm sorry, it was on the right, a man came in, removed his hat, took his jacket off, and he walked in and sat at the very back. Because all of the platform of this good-sized church, there were kids and teens, everybody, there were people sitting up, I, I, I kid you not, all over in the aisles because there was not enough chairs. Literally, the revival exploded. But at the invitation, he came forward. And he walked over to me in particular and took my hand. He said, I prayed that prayer with you because I always give the sinner's prayer at the invitation. He said, I prayed that prayer with you and God saved me tonight. But I want to tell you something. I'm looking for my neighbor. I said, um, has your neighbor been coming every night like clockwork? Yes. Does he drive a white Chevrolet? Yes. I said, okay, what's his name? And he gave it. Would you stand up? And he did. And man, these two were just bawling back and forth, yelling and happy. I said, How, what brought you to Christ? I mean, what caused you to come in? He said, I looked out the front window. He invited me every day almost. And he said, I'd watch him. 
And then finally, Friday, he got, he left. And I remember that was the last night of the meeting. So I got in my car, waited till he went down the street, disappeared. I jumped in my car and drove. I knew where the church was down in the holler. And he said, he said, I got saved tonight because my neighbor cared for me. Isn't that a good testimony? Amen. Well, here's something else. How to be a witness in your hometown. Secondly, you must keep, now, now, now don't lock and load on me. Don't, don't think I'm going off on the deep edge. But you must keep the Sabbath day holy. Now watch that. Look at verse 16. And as his custom was, what does that say? On the what? Sabbath day. Now, while although we are under grace and we're not under law, the Lord's day is to be a special day for the child of God. Now, let's look at two words, uh, actually one word here, and it is the word Sabbath. The word Sabbath. The word Sabbath means in the received text where the King James Bible comes from, in the Greek, it means a sacred or special day. Now, I want to ask you, is Sunday a special day? Sure it is. Is Wednesday a special day? Well, sure it is. Amen. It's when we come and gather together. All right? A sacred or a special day. The day of the Lord now, but let's take it and focus on it. It's the day of the Lord, and the day of the Lord is his resurrection day. So let's even shift it tighter. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. So with all of that done and said, we're under, we're under grace. And when we think about the Sabbath as it speaks of Jesus, it is his example that we should follow in verse 16. Notice it says, as his custom was. That means we follow his life pattern. He said, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Did he not? Sure he did. Amen. Now, thirdly, here's the third way to be a witness in your hometown. You must be willing to stand up. Verse 16, and stood up, speaking of Jesus, he did. He stood up uh, for to read. Now, they gave him uh, a book of the Bible, and it was on leather, it was on a scroll, and it was the book of Isaiah. And people need to know our neighbors, fellow employees, church members, they need to know that we stand for Jesus. We stand for him. Listen to 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, and what does he say? Be strong. Be strong. Amen? All right? So let's look at two words. First of all, he says, watch ye stand fast. Let's look at the word stand. The word stand here doesn't mean, you know, I'm standing right now. And at the end of the service, after we have prayer, before we leave, whether we go back uh, to the food bank or out the door, we're going to stand. But that's not what that's talking about. He says, stand fast in the faith. The word stand at this passage in this verse means to persevere and keep on going in the right direction. Amen? When the tribulation hits, the rapture has already occurred and we're gone. People are still going to get saved in the tribulation. But they're going to pay the price after they get saved. They are going to be persecuted like you cannot even believe. Now, so we need to stand fast for Jesus today. What did I see recently? What, uh, I brought that to your attention. I need, if you remember it, there was a, um, help. <laughs> yeah, I'm drawing a blank. Um, was it Google? No. 
somebody said, ah, and you might have remembered the headline, don't keep, okay, keep your prayers to yourself. You remember anything like that in the news? Pre keep your prayers to yourself. I will find that and, and I'll give it to Pastor. He can read it next Sunday to let you know. Actually, have the audacity to tell brothers and sisters in Christ you can pray, but keep your prayers to yourself. You can pray for those people in the hurricanes. Oh, my goodness, but keep it to yourself. We don't want to hear it. That's what's going to happen in tribulation. Only fivefold worse of what it's going to happen. A person prays in public in the tribulation, that's probably grounds for them to lose their life. They'll forfeit their life. And then he says, stand ye in the faith, stand fast, quit you like men, be strong. The word strong means to show yourself brave for Jesus Christ. Doesn't mean strong like that. Show yourself brave. For Jesus. One thing a witness, the more a person witnesses, the braver, stronger that they become in their faith. Now, Noah, Pastor mentioned Noah just a little while back last Sunday, but Noah built the ark that took how many years? Yeah, 120 years. And you know what? He was called a fool and a fanatic. And you will be too, eventually, if you stand for Jesus. Number four, how to be a witness in your hometown. You must be guided by an open book. Look at verse 17. Verse 17 of uh, Luke 4. Here's an excerpt. And when he had opened the book. Now, here's something that's essential it is essential that we read and hide God's word if we are to be a witness. My wife and I, we have our uh, Bible reading uh, every morning and then uh, we'll read together after we read individually and then we'll have prayer. I'll have prayer requests, she'll have prayer requests, we pray together. But I watch my wife with great enthusiasm because I will generally get finished a little shorter time than she will reading. But then I watch her and she's going over in the psalm, one psalm after another. I don't know how many, but she's got them memorized. And she just goes over them and memorizes them, quotes them, and quotes them, and quotes them. It's essential that we read and hide the word of God in our heart. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 2. Paul says the following. Ye are our epistles written in our hearts. Known, what does he say? Known and read of all men. Have you ever heard the phrase, uh, you can read that person like a book? Well, you know, that ought to be our testimony. We're walking with the Lord. Look at that. That person, they must live in the Word of God. They're, they're like a walking Bible. Who was called a walking Bible? Who was that? You were his executive secretary. Jack Van Impe. You ever heard of him? And, uh, and, and he was in uh, Rochester, I think, uh, Hills, Michigan. But um, he had the entire Bible from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22, the last verse, all of it memorized. All of it, 100% memorized. And that's, that's amazing. Uh, my, my wife working for him had some wonderful advantages. I came over one day and they were having devotions with the staff and, and uh, Brother Van Empey was uh, leading in the devotions. My wife was a uh, secretary, pastor's or the uh, Van Empey secretary, and then executive secretary for the Van Empey Crusades. And he came over to me and said, I hear you're doing meetings. I said, I am. He said, where are you going next? Lumberport, West Virginia. <laughs> that's, that's where we went. He said, um, 
I'm going to be praying for you, but I'm going to do something for you. I'm going to give you some cassettes. What are they? They're cassettes of my message. They're cassettes of Rexella singing, and once in a while they do a duo. A duo. And he, I, he gave me enough tapes to fill my table. And it wasn't amazing. And I did not, I gave him $1 back for every cassette that I sold. He said, I suggest you sell the cassettes for a gift of $5 each on the table for the meetings. And so I did that. And I wound up with over $1,400 free and clear from those cassettes. And he started giving them to me after that trip after trip after trip. And that was, that was such, a, uh, such a blessing. But I, I saw him on television not long ago. If I had saw him walking down the street, if I got real close, I might have recognized him. It's been years. He's, he's put on some miles, but I think that I, <laughs> I have too. All right, so you must be guided by an open book. Secondly, God's word urges us to be a witness and a soul winner. Matthew 4, 19, we quoted that once before, and he saith unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, in Matthew 4, 19. Here's the fifth on how to be a witness in your hometown. You must be anointed. Look at verse 18, verse 18 of our reading. The Spirit of the Lord, what did Jesus say, is upon me. Amen. And he's standing before a crowd that it would be hard to say what that crowd was going to be like until after their mood came out. Now, what do we need in order, in order if we're going to be soul winning and witnessing, we need to be anointed. Amen? So, we need power for soul winning. We need God's power. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 21 says the following. Now, he which establisheth, establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. God gives you fresh oil. He anoints you. Now, how, how many of you have ever, ever heard of uh, Dwight Lyman Moody? He's called D.L. Moody. You ever heard of him? Okay. And he founded the Moody Memorial Church. He also founded a girl's home in New Hampshire. Uh, not the Rebecca. That was Lester Roloff. But I think it was called, um, it was in Herman, I think, uh, New Hampshire. And it was the Herman's home for the girls, hundreds of girls. But when the Lord took him home, a pastor was called later by the name of John Harper. Listen to this. You don't want to forget this. John Harper, the newly called pastor of the Moody Memorial Church in the early 1900s manifested his true Christian character in the sinking of the Titanic. Are you ready for this? Survivors told of the last moments before the ship sank that John Harper was leaning against the rail of the sinking ship and he was pleading for a man to come to Christ as the ship went down. Last thing he ever did. Pastor of a church. No more used of God in witnessing than any one of us in, in this room. But he paid the price and he was anointed. Now, we need power for witnessing to others. We are anointed or set apart. Think about this. When you, get, when you got baptized, now see, we're not going to be in church Sunday morning. Our, uh, our youngest granddaughter, uh, little Eva, lives over in Queen Creek. And Aaron brought uh, his wife and three girls over to hear me preach one Sunday here. And, um, <laughs> and my goodness, and he's a deacon now over at Desert Gateway Baptist Church. I led him to Christ. In, uh, just outside of Pontiac, Michigan, when I was in Bible college, 
or when I went later in, in, in uh, getting some schooling, I pulled up to a light, stoplight, and he looked over at me and said, now, Dad. I said, now what? He said, I want to get saved right now. Well, the light had just turned red. So I put it up in park, and I led my son to the Lord. Not a horn blew. The light turned green. I cheated and looked, and we talked for a moment. Nobody drove around us. God ordained that day, and our son got saved. Well, so she's going to get baptized. That's the last of his daughters, and uh, Emily, Emma, and Eva. And so we're going to be there to see her get baptized. Baptism is when a person gets baptized, they are set apart, you see, as a vessel unto the Lord. And so, uh, and the Lord's Supper even, when you partake of the Lord's Supper, you're setting yourself apart for the Lord Jesus, and you are examining yourself and allowing the Spirit of God to prepare you to be used of God and to walk with him according to his will. Number six, if you're going to be a witness in your hometown, you must share the burden of Christ. Notice in verse 18, it says to heal the brokenhearted, to heal the brokenhearted. You know what Jesus has? Jesus has a broken heart for the lost. He really does. Listen to what took place in Luke chapter 19 in verse 41. In Luke 19, 41, and when he was come near, in other words, the city of Jerusalem, he beheld the city and wept over it. Jesus wept over the souls of men and women and boys and girls. Now, sometimes we lose that burden and we must obtain it again from the Lord. Listen to John chapter 13, beginning in verse 16 and verse 17. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than, uh, than he that uh, sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Now, don't wait until it's too late. Here's a, here's a true story of a man that owned a farm outside of Portland, Oregon. He was a retired farmer who went to a revival and accepted Christ. He was overjoyed and began to tell his children. And as he did, they seemingly humored him and said, perhaps someday, Dad, not now, but when I get your age, I will get saved. The lesson is if you're not saved, or you have loved ones that aren't saved, or neighbors or people you're witnessing to, don't put it off. If you're not saved, don't put it off. And here's our last point of being how to be a witness in your hometown. Number seven, you must stand under scrutiny You'll find this in verse 20. Verse 20 says, And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Now, why were they looking at him so intently? Well, perhaps they wondered if he was for real. Because in verse 20, it says that their eyes were fastened on him. Fastened doesn't mean like you put a tack on a wall and hang something. That's not talking about that. It's not talking about stapling two sheets of paper together. The word fastened means they looked earnestly. Earnestly they looked. People are earnestly looking for something that is missing in their life. Have you noticed lately in all this political opposition that is taking place. I'm going to lay out a, a news station for you. I, I, if you're able to get it, you ought to try it. If you, I'm not trying to put a plug in. If you have direct TV, it's on 347. It's, it's OAN, One America News. 
a news station like you've never watched before. They are strictly straight shooters. And every day, one thing I like, they give at the beginning, here's the cost of the borders, uh, what, the, uh, what the walls uh, and the border is costing us. Because President Trump asked for $5 billion and Congress refused to let, give him the money to start building the wall. And it gets into the hundreds and hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. But you know what I'm seeing more and more? As I, I, I enjoy what I start off. We have breakfast. We've already had devotions. I'll put the news on. Uh, we, we watch Fox News, not as much as we used to, but we watch One American News. And we watch this. More and more, we're seeing football players, police officers, and all kinds of people that have very recently given their heart to Christ, looking at all the turmoil in the nation, they have no, others, no one to look to but to Jesus. And many of these people ask their friends to tell them how to be saved. Amazing. And so we have a revival, in a sense, that is starting to break loose in the United States. People are looking for something that is missing in their life. When someone looks at our lives, think on this, and they look under close observation, will they see or hear what they need? Will they do that? Now, a few years ago, true story, a few years ago, a large New York insurance company did the unthinkable. They flew hundreds of their agents from all across the country to their headquarters. And while they were there, now listen to this, one insurance agent, one agent from out west sold insurance to the elevator man, the barber, it's a big building, and a waiter. All of these had been employees of the insurance company for several years. In their zeal of this big company to sell insurance, they had failed to offer policies to those that were very close to them. When a church has an evangelist in, like we'll be having in October 6th, I believe it is, a good number of souls are usually swept in to the kingdom of God. And yet, we do not need to wait for evangelists. I think his last name is Mann. We don't need to wait for him. Because souls are all around us, and they're already in need of being saved. So let's start witnessing and winning souls, and thereby we are a witness in our hometown, whether it be Coolidge, Antrim, uh, Florence, Cactus Forest, which is Florence. doesn't make any difference. It's where we live. Now, don't give up on your neighbors. We live on a block. We live on Blue Sage. And I say this in respect. Our neighbors are all that area where we live. They're, they're redneckers. <laughs> they really are. And uh, I mean, you know, just dyed in the wool, country, desert, cowboy type in the past. Well, Edie started baking some of the best muffins you have ever had in your life. They're rolls, dinner rolls. Same recipe she uses for a homemade bread. And she'd make, I don't know how many for each family. And that is one, two, three, four, five, five people. One man by the name of Al is not far from death's door. And so we've been there a few times. But we noticed that some of the families bless their heart. I can understand why people don't want to trust people because they don't know people. And, you know, they've had somebody maybe take advantage of them. But the last time we were out there, the doors were open, weren't they? And it was such an encouragement and, and, and took God's plan for your life tracks that our church has. Wonderful track that a person can read from front to back and it'll tell them how to get saved without any hesitation whatsoever. We are witnesses in our hometown. Let God use us for such. And God's people said, Amen.
Let's bow our heads for a moment. With our heads bowed, would there be one here this evening? No one's looking. We're not going to uh, come and embarrass you. But if you're not really sure that you're saved, could we pray for you? Not call you by name, but could we please pray for you? And just by raising your hand, you're saying, Brother Eccles, I, I, I think that I'm not really sure, but I'd like to get it settled. Would you pray for me? Is there one like that? All right. How many this evening you would say, as the Lord enables me, I'd like to be a witness in my hometown and that God would use me and anoint me. Would you raise your hand all across this auditorium that God would use you? Yes, that's virtually many, many hands. Now, Father in heaven, as we, as we come to a conclusion of the service, we ask that you would, your will might be done in, in the heart and life of every person in this auditorium. And Father, for those that are at home that are watching the televised service, we'd like to talk to you just for a moment. And then we'll conclude our prayer. So my eye contact to yours, yours to mine. If you are not 100% sure that if you were to die, that you'd go to heaven. I'd like to help you. I'm going to ask right now where you are that if you would just simply with me, just bow your head and then I'm going to ask you to pray with me and just pray this prayer, my dear friend. Just pray, dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me on the cross. I believe you shed your blood and gave your life to pay for my sins. Right now, Lord Jesus, the only way that I know how, I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Please save me and change me and take me to heaven when I die. Thank you, Lord, and I love you. In Jesus' name, name. Amen. Now, before we finish the prayer, I'd like to give you an invitation again to come to the service and hear our pastor this coming Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, you'll not be disappointed. You will find a warm welcome at the Florence Baptist Church. I can honestly say the drive is worth the difference. It really is. Now, Father, we ask now that as we go home tonight, that you'll bless each and every one of us and use us and we'll praise you in Jesus' name and God's people said, amen. amen. Now, do we have food? All right, do we have a lot? There was what, ribeyes, steaks, and what, John? Yeah, <laughs> okay. All right, if you believe that, I'll sell you a bridge. But there's some good food out there. We're dismissed.